Hi, my name is Marcus Ruiz Evans. I created what's known as the Calexit Movement. Uh, you may not have ever heard of me, even though I started the whole thing. Uh, welcome to the media in modern America, right? So, uh, I am born and raised in Fresno, California. Fresno is the conservative part of California. I am a liberal. I am the liberal in the room. Let's just get that out of the way. So, okay, I don't bite. I've talked to a lot of you. I'm not a yelling, screaming liberal. I'm a liberal that says, look, you have different opinions than me. And if we talk and you have good reasons other than I saw someone else say it and I never read a book in my life and you actually can think for yourself, I begin to think, well, maybe you just have different opinions and that doesn't make you a bad person. Well, why can't we disagree? with each other. We used to be able to do that as Americans. That just doesn't happen anymore. I was talking with some people at lunch, and I'll say the same thing I said last night. Divisiveness in America today, according to foreign policy experts and opinion polls, is as bad as it was right before the Civil War. What happened then? It is not cool to talk across the aisle according to any politician. It's not okay to do it according to any newscaster. It's not even okay to do it if you're a reporter. Fox News reporters don't talk to MSNBC reporters. They don't share notes. And as you know, I'm sure with your friends and family, it's not okay to talk with people on the streets that have a different opinion. So what we're looking at is from the bottom up to the top, it is not okay to debate, to discuss, to disagree. When that happens, it breaks down. And so what I said last night, and I took the headline from Harper's Magazine. Harper's Magazine came out this month. Cover of the magazine. Watch out for the Second Civil War. That is a respectable magazine. They put it on their cover. They could have took a lot of flack for it. They took none. What does that tell you? Things are getting bad. We're going to be making choices to rearrange the structure of America, or America's gonna be rearranged in a way you don't want it to be. The choice of not doing anything isn't a choice for any of you in this room. You will be making choices and choosing to change things and endorsing nullification and secession, or you're gonna be watching this experiment of American federalism blow up in your face. That's not my opinion. That's what people are saying. I encourage everybody to do the same thing I told everybody last night. Go online, type in Second Civil War, and just look at the dates of those articles. You will not find any five years ago. You'll see one or two, two years ago, then more a year ago, then a lot more six months ago, then even more three months ago, and even more two weeks ago. What does that tell you? This isn't about Trump. Look at 2014, they wrote articles about how America can't work anymore and it was so divisive. Obama was around then. This is an American problem. This is not a left problem, this is not a right problem, this is an everyone problem. I wanna repeat something the World Bank said. When they shut down the federal government uh, between the Tea Party and Obama, and the Tea Party said, it's all the liberals, look at what they did, and Obama said, it's the Tea Party, and look at the conservatives, and look what they did, and a bunch of world bankers who were not Americans said, you're both wrong. Y'all act like children. You shut down the federal government because you can't work together? You just scared the entire global class of economists. The entire world is laughing at you, America. That was 2014. Nobody ever heard of Trump. This isn't about Trump. This isn't about Obama. This is about the way things are going. Look at the last couple elections over the last 20 years. Read that Harper's Magazine article. They talk about how it used to be where midterm elections would kind of shift to the other party, but not totally. And then around 20 years ago, it was a complete revocation of whoever was in charge. So whoever was in power, they'd vote for the other person. P voters started going with a vote everybody out. I hate whatever you're doing because my party didn't win. 
things weren't working 20 years ago, folks. So what I want to do is give a speech, but I have to say a few points right now because of Professor Livingston. By the way, thank you, Abbeville Institute, for inviting Calexit out here, uh, specifically Yes, California. We're deeply appreciative of the invitation, and we are here to destroy stereotypes that liberals and conservatives cannot talk and cannot work together for a common goal. Obviously, we don't share the same values, but I think we share a common understanding that secession is your right as Americans, that it is legal, despite what you've heard in the news, and that it can be done peacefully. I share that. I speak for 43,000 people in, yes, California, and one-third of Californians who believe that. They've just never taken the time to have a conversation with you because the television says you're all evil people and nobody could ever talk with you. Well, I got to tell you, when I did Facebook Live, I proved that wrong. And I kept saying on Facebook Live, you'll never see this in the news. So I hope you spread that Facebook Live video yourself. Do not expect the media to do it. They will not. They have a narrative they're pushing. They will never let you challenge that narrative. You and I are not supposed to be talking. We're not supposed to give each other hugs. We're not supposed to be saying, look, we disagree, but we can agree on a future together. Not supposed to be happening. So spread the word, because if you don't, it ain't going to happen. That's modern America. I got to tell you, I've talked to reporters and reporters and reporters, and this interesting thing keeps happening. For every foreign reporter I talk to, they print both sides of the argument. They talk to both sides, and they'll print our counterpoints. And for every single American reporter I talk to, they print none of our counter arguments and only go with one side reporting. How come every foreign reporter does something called a balanced review of both sides, and yet 35 American reporters never did that covering this? I'll just leave you to think about that and wonder what that means. I want to back up Professor Livingston by saying, I'm a Californian. That means I automatically think uh, slavery is horrible and it's bad and it's wrong and it is but I also want to point out that you all have been discredited secession has meant racism exclusively for decades since Wallace in the 1960s and that is incorrect nobody took you for granted uh, believed you they didn't believe that you could actually say you know maybe here in Oklahoma we have a different opinion on gun laws and abortion no, no, that's not why you're interested in nullification and secession. You want to put down brown-skinned people, period. That's it. That's what they think. And I'm glad to say that you are getting a reprieve from that character assassination due to us. They never talked about the left was interested in secession before Cal Exit. They never talked about how progressives could be for states' rights before Cal Exit. And CalExit exclusively exists because of Yes, California. We were there the day Donald Trump got elected. We had a tent in front of Sacramento because we had a permit, and we had talking points, and flyers, and posters, and people in t-shirts. And the news came up to us and said, wow, you really got your Trump resistance ready quickly. And I said, we've been doing this since Obama was president for four years. You're just paying attention now. I already said America doesn't support California values. You called us an extremist four years ago. And the reporter says, well, I, uh, I, uh, 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 yes, what would you like to talk about? And they went off to someone else. I didn't fit the narrative. You know, how many times do we have to say, sorry, folks, we've been saying this for years. You want to listen now. Same message, haven't changed our talking points. Go to Facebook. You can see years we've been saying the same thing going back to being sovereign California. We changed our name to Yes, California. And to back you up, Professor, and just to say that I know that you have been discredited unfairly, I'm going to point out a couple facts, things you'll never see in the news. Now, obviously, slavery is horrible and wrong, but a couple things you won't see in the news. One, why is it that Americans think that the Civil War happened independent of what was going on in the world at that time? There was the Second Industrial Revolution. The entire modern world was building railroads and metal factories and ships and moving into industrialization. The North was industrialized. The South wasn't. The North won the war. Guess who controlled all the rail lines after the war? The North. Guess who Abraham Lincoln's best friend was? Anybody know the answer to this? Who was Abraham Lincoln's best friend in Europe throughout the entire Civil War? Uh, well, that's a good answer. I'm going to go... <laughs> 
I'm going to go with Bismarck. Anybody know Otto von Bismarck? Yeah. He was worried about unifying Germany because there were these countries called England and France who were producing more metal things and railroads and ships and industries, and they were building mechanized armies. And he was afraid of being surrounded and taken over. And the one person in the planet that he felt the most commonality to was a guy called Abraham Lincoln. Now, why would a German nationalist and an American patriot be best friends if they never met before in their life and didn't even speak the same language? Maybe because they understood the way the world economy was and they knew they were under the same threat. They knew you had to industrialize. They knew you had to unify. They knew you had to have a central state or you were going to be pushed around England and France. You will never see that in print. That will never be talked about. Why is that? It's a fact. It's out there. Why don't they mention that? Why don't they mention the fact that 30 nations had slavery and only two of them went to war for it? Only two. What were the two? America and what was the other one? That's right. And 30 other nations bought out their slave owners, never had a war, and never had anybody shot. And yet we're supposed to believe it had to be a war, it was inevitable. Really? 29 other nations figured this out. You'll never see that in print either. You'll never also see that Abraham Lincoln was something liberals hate today. He was a corporate lawyer. All of his clients were giant railroad corporations. And guess who won after the war? Giant railroad corporations. Coincidence? Never mentioned ever. So I want to say when you are unfairly characterized, I get it. Calexit gets it. We've been unfairly characterized. I can't tell you the amount of slander that has been laid thick on us without ever covering the facts and how we love foreign reporters because we actually get a fair chance. With that as the introduction, I'm going to go to my speech. <laughs> that was just a warm up, folks. That was just to get you up. Everybody put up your hands up in the air. I'll put them down. Now clap. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, now here's the formal speech. I'm going to try to keep it from going boring. Um, my name is Marcus Ruiz Evans, and I come from California. I am a liberal, and I come from possibly the most liberal place in America, but I want to point something out. I speak for 25% of America, and I speak for 25% of every state in America, because 25% of every state believes that their state has the right to secede, and I believe that too, and you believe that too. I speak for more than just California liberals when I say California secession would be beneficial to every American and all America because it would force the federal government to respect federalism. That's for all of you. I speak for more than just California liberals and rather all Americans now when I say that I am afraid and many Californians are afraid of living under laws forced on us by the federal government that do not reflect our values. I think that's something perhaps all of you feel too. And finally, I speak for all Americans when I warn and I am sincerely afraid that it is not working anymore and that we are going to go to either a second civil war or we're going to head it off peacefully and legally. Yes, I'm a liberal. Yes, we don't share values, but we share so much in common. You all here know the threat that's coming. You all here know that secession is legal. And what I want to say is work with us on the left. I know that some of you have been unfairly yelled and screamed at, and I'm sorry. I didn't do that. I don't approve of that. But I want to let you know that there are many liberals who recognize we didn't treat you fairly, we mischaracterized you, and yes, it took Trump, but we finally got what you're saying. We are fighting as CalExit against fellow California liberals, and it would be nice to have some support from conservatives saying on a principled stand, you're right. You have that right to secede. You have that right to protect your culture. You have that right to be proud of yourself, and you have that right to pursue a peaceful way to either nullify or secede. There have been a couple polls recently you know, 2014, there was one showing 
of every state said they support secession. One of our favorite ones is Rasmussen last year said that it was now 30% of Americans supported secession. I know someone else had a Zogby polls and I, I love those poll numbers better. I'm just throwing out other numbers. The point is you go back a couple of years ago, it's 25%. You go last year, it's 30%. That's a 5% increase in three years. Now, does that mean it's gonna grow 5% every three years? What if the amount of support for secession wasn't linear, but was based upon events? What if when people see dramatic things on TV happen and they get scared, the amount of support grows faster? What if there is a future in America in the near term where the amount of support for secession grows by 5% every year? The reason that I stood up to defend Texas versus white, and yes, I am not saying it is the only legal path to secession at all. I'm simply pushing that because it's something Californians understand. Californians don't understand a original interpretation of the 13 states and how they were recognized as independent nations in the Paris Agreement that made America. It's too long to explain it to them. You tell them the Supreme Court said, yes, you can secede through consent to the states in a little known case, they listen to you. And one of the things I want to point out is, two years ago, the media would not admit that Texas versus white exists. Then a year ago, they said, okay, it does exist. Then six months ago, they said, okay, it exists, and yeah, there's the phrase consent to the states, but it, quotes, probably doesn't mean what they think it means, but, quotes, I can't say. That was from a Berkeley dean of the Constitutional Center. <laughs> a dean of a constitutional law center from one of the best law schools on planet Earth. Why did he change his tune? Because of us. Because of people like you. Don't bow. Don't bend over. Let 30 people look at you like you're a weirdo. You know why? Because five of those people in that group are too scared to say they agree with you. Sociologists have proven that in a group of 30 people, if just one extra person backs you up, half of that group begins to take you seriously. <clears throat> Out of 30 people, you're the first person to speak. If one extra person backs you up, half of that group begins to take you seriously. That is a sociological fact. It is programmed into all of us who call ourselves humans. Don't back down. Keep saying what's right. Keep challenging the narrative. Do not put up with being stereotyped at all because that's how they're gonna get you. We had a Cal Exit conference and they go, watch out because if we get big, people will start getting assassinated. No, they're not. They're gonna character assassinate you before you ever get anywhere. Watch for that. That's how they'll get you. Don't listen to this person. They stand for X, they stand for Y. They were seen with so-and-so. Don't pay attention. Don't research them on your own. Just go with what I said on MSNBC or Fox News. Right? Listen to me. Don't think for yourself. Question everything. Look into it yourself. Challenge the narrative. Push the narrative. We have been pushing the narrative and we have been winning. That dean of the Berkeley Constitutional Law Center was never going to admit Texas versus white existed or it said consent to the states or that it could back up our interpretation until we kept ramming it down their throats 300 times every single chance we got for years on end. And when they couldn't get us to shut up, and when they couldn't get our members to leave, they had to acknowledge there was something there. That's how you win. And so I came today with a simple message. <clears throat> Back Cal Exit. You have been unfairly characterized as racist. You want to know how to get out of that? You back a progressive secession movement. Because then the media has to go, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're all racist, right? Right, okay, and then these people are for diversity, and you're saying they have the right to protect diversity and that you support their right and that you would vote for it and that you think that that's okay for them to do that. Uh, it's almost like you're standing for secession on principle instead of <laughs> racist? I, I, don't, I don't know. You beat that narrative into their head. You do not back down. You do not stop. You keep repeating it. We are your opportunity to get out of the hole you've been in since Wallace, right? Half a century, all your racists, 
That's it. That's all you stand for. You don't actually believe in standing for policies that protect your values. It's about keeping brown-skinned people down, right? That's what they say. So back us, because then the media has to acknowledge that. And when they do that, it challenges their narrative. And when they challenge the narrative, they have to report on it more. So here's the cycle I want to give you. Conservative red state Americans back CalExit. And you say, I'm sorry, California liberals, any of you thought that we were going to be weeping in the streets if you left are wrong. Any of you thought that we were going to be crying to ourselves because we lost the star off the flag are wrong. We will vote for you to go. That will get in California news, I promise you, because it is not what California liberals think. Our movement would be a thousand percent larger except for that one issue. I've had the most debates of anybody on earth about CalExit. I've been at it the longest. I've talked to the most people. I've met the most people on the streets. The number one thing they said was, I would back you, but it's a pipe dream. Why is it a pipe dream? You'll never get the votes. America will never let you go. And if they did, they'll militarily invade you. Why would they do that? Uh, an emotional connection to 50 stars on the flag, and, and they would be just upset to see fellow Americans leave. Let me ask you, is that true? No. I couldn't hear you. No. I still didn't hear you. Interesting. I hope the camera picked that up. Because I got to tell you, when I get back to California, people are going to tell me, you're making that up, Marcus. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to play that thing right there. <laughs> That's why we had the consent of the state's conference calls. That's why I talked to you. That's why I took the heat from fellow liberals. Why are you talking to those people? How come you didn't call them a racist within the first five minutes? Because I wanted to have a conversation. And I wanted a real answer to my question. Yes, they will vote for us to go. You push that message on your end, it will get in California news because Californians will be fascinated by that. It gets in California news, more Californians talk about secession. More Californians talk about secession, the more the national liberal news has to cover the topic of more people in secession. The more people hear about secession, the more they think it can happen. I tell you something once, maybe you believe it. I tell you it 50 times, you're thinking it whether or not you admit it. You want to move that percent from 25 to 32 to 35 to 40 to 45 to 47 to 51. And at 51, that's where you bring up Texas versus white. Because they cannot say until the Supreme Court revisits Texas versus white that a 51% vote threshold doesn't allow legal secession. Texas versus White said you cannot secede unilaterally. It did not say you can't secede. It said you can secede with consent of the states. Say whatever you will. Talk to whatever law school professor you want. That is the only case. And we just talked about how the Supreme Court gets to determine what's the law. Right? The Constitution doesn't say the word secession. But it very clearly says on legal questions you go to the Supreme Court. Okay, Supreme Court, you will have to revisit Texas versus white. And you're going to have to say if consent of the states means two-thirds or 51%. Because everybody else is guessing. When a dean of the Berkeley Law School says, maybe, but I'm not sure, yeah. That means he don't know. That means nobody knows. I don't care what professor you got. Get the Supreme Court to rule on it. That's the only decision. And here's the point I want to make. The amendment process was around from the beginning of America. It's not like the Supreme Court in 1879 when they visited Texas versus White had never heard of an amendment. So why did they not say consent and secession is legal through an amendment? They could have said that. They did not. They said it's through consent of the states. Why use different language from amendment? If you meant amendment, why not say it? It's not like they didn't know. Let's get the Supreme Court to revisit Texas versus white. Let's get them to say, because here's what happens. We win no matter what. Can you imagine on the news, for the first time since the Civil War, the Supreme Court has to revisit the topic of secession? These people are all nutbag crazy. Right. But now half of America is thinking about secession because it's on TV, because the Supreme Court visited, because now it's real. You keep pushing that narrative, you keep talking about it. And if they don't say it's 51%, fine. We lost the battle, but we won a war. And maybe they do say it's 51%, which means we only need 25 states, 25, plus California, 
for California to secede. That's why I'm talking to you. You want to change your reputation? You want to be respected for who you actually are? Then back us. We're here now. I'm here. I'm reaching out to you. CalExit is willing to work with you. Yes, I cannot change every li crying, screaming liberal. That's going to happen. I'm sorry. But there are some of us in California who want out, and it ain't a game, and we're not playing. We're serious, and we're willing to do what it takes. A lot of people told me not to come here, and that if I did, I would get shot. <laughs> All I've met is nice, courteous people who are willing to talk to me. But just about 90% of everybody in California said, Marcus, are you, are you sure, man? Are you, you sure about this? Are you, this is Texas. They're going to shoot you. Don't, don't tell them you're a liberal. Just say you're a Republican when you get there. I go, no, I'm going to tell them the truth. I'm going to tell them the truth. And you know what? It's going to be okay. No, no, it won't. What? Uh, uh, I, I'm Mexican, so the Mexican Catholics, they, you know, pray and stuff. It's fine. We can talk. We can agree. Work with us. You work with us, the California news covers it. The California news covers it, the liberal media has to cover it. The liberal media has to say, looks like conservatives maybe aren't racist. Maybe they just believe in secession because they believe in policies. And that conversation gets going. And that conversation gets going, and we keep all bringing up Texas versus white, and then the Supreme Court talks about Texas versus white, and now you're looking at 51% of Americans in every state saying, yeah, I think we have the right to secede. And that's how you win. Everybody get that plan? <laughs> it's going to work. Give us some hope. I understand that Californians don't appear like traditional conservatives who supported secession, but I want to tell you, we got that rebel spirit. You know we do. Here's one of my favorite polls. January 2017. January 2017, my favorite month. Favorite month ever. A couple polls came out. One of them said by Reuters Ipsos, and you'll never see this in the news, except for foreign press. I don't know why. Discuss amongst yourselves after the speech. 32% of Californians, according to Stanford and Reuters Ipsos, support secession. Okay. Now, the narrative was, that must mean two-thirds of Californians are against it, right? Uh, only a third support it. That must mean a majority are against it. No, that's not what the poll showed. But you got to look at the actual data from Stanford and Reuters Ipsos. And what it showed was 16% and 15.5% said, let's talk. I'm open to it. That means we're talking about 46 to 47.5% of Californians who said, I'm willing to discuss secession. This is one of the things I, I love doing is I go, hey, if I walk up to you, I'll, I'll pick on you, sorry. And I say, hey. Would you like to go get an ice cream? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. And I go, hey, let's go commit an armed robbery. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, let's talk about it. <laughs> what? We didn't ask people, do you believe in climate change? We asked them, do you believe in secession? 47.5% said, yeah, I'm open to it. Never made it to print in America outside of GQ magazine. Only foreign reporters will print that. I got it directly from the people who did the poll from Reuters, Ipsos. I have sent that citation to 35 reporters. Never makes it into print. You can discuss why amongst yourself why that happens. I think it's because they know we could do it. They know that almost half the Californians are open to this. Don't put that in print. They might actually pull it off. The very next month, February 2017, two other polls came out. Secession's not bad crazy, right? California, oh yeah, sure. Hey, how do you feel about ignoring federal law on marijuana? 66% said, I'm for it. <laughs> That's not secession or nullification. That's just, we want to do what we want to do and not listen to the federal government. <laughs> I, 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 you know, secession and nullification, that's for crazy racists. I'm about smoking marijuana and I want. 66% said, yes. 65% said, how do you feel about ignoring federal law on immigration? Federal government makes immigration law. Every country on earth. 65% of California said, yeah, let's forget whatever they say and do our own thing. That's not nullification. Nullification is society. That's for crazy racists. And then they did the thing, same thing for air quality and then net neutrality and you name it. Californians love ignoring the federal government. Two thirds of them do. You say secession, oh, it's only one third. 
Only one-third believe in secession and nullification. Two-thirds believe in doing whatever the hell they wanted, ignoring the federal government. Totally separate ideas. <laughs> totally separate concepts. Those polls were a month apart. We're there. Help me educate my people, and we will back you. I'll leave it there. I'm open for questions.